Okay, let's look at my favorite watches of the year of 2022. Let's do it. In reverse order, at number five, is the Tudor Black Bay Pro. People absolutely loved this watch upon its release. And if there are any doubts that Rolex was using Tudor as their playground, where they could reimagine and reinvent old Rolex designs, that doubt has now been removed completely with the release of the Black Bay Pro because of its uncanny resemblance to the 1655 Explorer 2. But of course they brought it back now with the Tudor Edge. Some had concerns about the thickness of the watch, but I think those worries were quickly squashed as the reviews came out on the various channels, including my own. I did a pretty uh, sexy review on that watch with, you know, macros and slow-mos, focus pulls, and rock music and all that stuff. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. So check it out if you want to see a detailed review of the watch. At number four is the Zero West DB1, DB standing for Dam Busters. If you're into World War history, British history, aviation, etc., you have to check out Zero West. It's dedicated to the men who devised and carried out the incredible mission during World War II, Operation Chastise. If you're not familiar with the story, it's quite remarkable. They even made a movie about it back in 1955, which was famously plagiarized by George Lucas in his first Star Wars film, A New Hope. There's a lot of scenes that are almost identical if you put them side by side. But this was a real mission and real lives were lost. And this watch is dedicated to the men who carried out the mission and the Avril Lancaster, the aircraft that was used. I've done a few reviews for these guys. Some might even call them documentaries. And they're my favorite micro brand. These guys are the real deal. They have a true passion for what they're doing. Graham Collins, the mastermind behind the brand, is an ex-special operations engineer. This guy can't even talk about the missions he was involved in, but he's now retired from that and has uh, settled into watch building. He even stitches his watch straps by hand himself. It's quite amazing. The dial on this one is a mirror image of the altimeter on a Lancaster. If you don't know the relevance of that, go watch my documentary all about it. And as is the case with many Zero West watches, the case back includes metal from the actual aircraft used. How they were able to get their hands on salvaged scrap metal from a crash site from a Lancaster that was used on the Dam Busters mission, I have no idea. Believe you me, I tried to extract that information from them. I failed. As you can imagine, their watches are extremely limited production and usually sell out within weeks of being announced. But if you're lucky enough to get your hands on one, it could be a real prized possession in your watch collection, especially if you're into World War II history, aviation, British history, all of that good stuff. The DB1 from Zero West, check it out. And number three is the Seiko SRP. H15K1, or the Seiko Hulk, as I'm calling it, because it's so green. It's got the green dial and the green bezel, just like the Rolex Hulk, and it has that beautiful satin steel finish. If you know my channel well, you'll know that I have a soft spot for Seiko. I just love their watches. They're all in-house, all the way down to the 4R35 movement. This one in particular caught my eye because, of course, yes, it's green, but also the slimness of that watch head. It just adds to the elegance. Well, other Seikos can get quite bulky at times, but this one is just right. I love that green dial that just bursts open in the sunlight and the green bezel that seconds as a compass. And I love how shallow the dial is and how slender that cushion case is. I'm actually giving one of these away on the channel in the coming weeks, so look out for that. But if you don't want to wait that long, you can pick up one of these things for around 500 bucks online. And I just think it's a no-brainer. I made a video about this watch. I'll leave a link in the description below. But there was a first video that was very popular with some of you guys that was a bit more artistic and experimental. Unfortunately, that video was shut down by King Crimson, the people who own the music that I used. But if you are a patron of the channel on patreon.com, you can go over there and see the thing in its entirety ad free. At number two is the Hamilton Murph 
38 mil. This watch, of course, played a crucial role in Christopher Nolan's sci-fi epic Interstellar. And ever since that film was released in theaters in 2014, people have been going crazy looking for the exact watch that was designed for and used in the film. And Hamilton released it, but it did have one little problem. They used the exact same dimensions as were used in the prop on the set and it was just far too big. It was 42 millimeters and for a khaki style 300, it was like a dinner plate. Well, in the end, Hamilton listened to their viewers, their fans, their potential buyers, and they brought out a new version in 38 mil only a few weeks ago. Better late than never. It's taken a little time. The film came out in 2014, but it's still a very popular film. And I think for generations, people will be seeing that film and wanting that exact watch for the emotional connection that they have with the film. So well done to Hamilton for actually taking that into account. I made a video on that too, explaining the story, the science behind the concept, and of course the watch itself. Warner Brothers shut it down many times on YouTube, so I had to put it on a different streaming service. I'll leave a link in the description below. A lot of people consider it the best video I've ever made. You're gonna need about 90 minutes to put aside for it and uh, definitely bring some tissues. At number one and a half, I just have to squeeze this one in because it is kind of important, is the Omega Swatch collaboration, the Moon Swatch. Say what you want about this watch, but it really was a huge release this year. It also blew the lid off how large the watch buying community really is. It was pretty scary to see how many people were interested in getting this watch. I'm a huge Omega Speedmaster nut and I had mixed feelings about exactly what this watch was. But I do love the concept of each watch being associated with different planets in our solar system. I think that is a brilliant concept. And the designs of the watches are really, really nice. I featured two moon swatches on the channel so far, the Uranus and the Saturn. And despite the little attention that they actually received, I was very proud of particularly the Saturn one in which I was able to achieve certain photography I never thought I'd be able to do on the channel. Fun fact, the head of Swatch Group himself, Nick Hayek, actually saw that video and loved it. And number one is the new Omega Seamaster 300M, the 60th anniversary of Bond. If you know my channel well, you'll know I love the SP 300M. I love that on this they went blue, they went steel, they went back to the original wave dial. I have no problems with the Milanese bracelet, which certain people do. I wasn't so crazy about it in titanium on the No Time to Die model from a couple of years back, but on this one it works. I also like the fact that they went with steel and no faux patina. I love the 60 on the bezel instead of a 12 hour marker, and I don't even mind the gimmicky back that they put on there after all. It's the back of the watch. This is just a great release from Omega. It's great to see them moving forward, but also keeping in mind the classic designs they have from the past. Well done. So there you have it guys, just some interesting observations over the 2022 as the year comes to a close. Let me know if you agree with any of those selections or if you disagree, leave it in the comments. Let me know what your favorites and uh, least favorites are from over the year. Use the comments for a constructive purpose. All right, guys, over and out. Thank you for watching the channel. I will see you again soon.